Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a joint book review, reviewing five different books. And these books are This Adventure Ends, History of Wolves, The Watcher, The House of Lives, and We Were on a Break. I guess we'll just go in whatever order they are in now. So let's first get into the book that just dropped. So the first book that I will be reviewing is This Adventure Ends by Emma Mills and I was sent this book in exchange for an honest review by Pan McMillan. So thank you very much. This book is gorgeous, both on the outside cover and this cover, like look at it naked. Guys, look at it naked. It's gorgeous. And it follows a girl named Salone who has recently moved to a U town. And she meets this group of friends who change her. They are everything that I guess she's ever wanted and needed. Things that she didn't even know that she wanted or needed in her life. Her friends are very different people and they're all dealing with their own problems. Two of her friends are twins and their mother just recently died. But before she died, she did a painting for the twins so that they would remember her and unfortunately the painting has gone missing. So Salone takes it upon herself to find this painting for the twins. And she hopes that in doing so she will become closer to both of them because she really wants to become closer to these group of friends that suddenly mean so much to her and I guess she wants to mean so much to them too. To be honest, I don't know how I feel about this book. Like, I liked it, but just wasn't anything special for me. This book gets a solid 3 out of 5 stars. It was a really nice contemporary read, so if you're just looking for something light and fluffy and about finding yourself and realising, I guess, how important friendship can be, then I'd really recommend this one. I also, I have to say, really did like the family aspect of this book because Salone's parents actually exist in this book. I know, shocking. A YA book, especially a YA contemporary that has family. <gasps> What is this? Is it like real life? All jokes aside, Zaloran's dad is one of the not best characters, but I did find him really interesting. He's a writer and he starts writing like this kind of teen wolf fan fiction and it's just, it's really good. I really liked reading about that. It was a lot of fun. So yeah, that's what this book was for me. Just like, you know, fun. It was fun to read, but at the end when I finished the book, it didn't leave me of anything meaningful. So if you're just wanting a nice fluffy contemporary, then I would recommend this one, but it's not going to leave you with, I guess, any thought provoking life changing theories or at least least it didn't for me. So yeah, this one gets a solid 3 out of 5 stars. The next book I was sent from Hatchet Australia in exchange for an honest review, so thank you very much Hatchet Australia, and that is History of Wolves by Emily Fridland. This book follows a 14 year old girl named Linda, and Linda is very, I guess, estranged from her parents. Her parents and her basically act like strangers to each other. Linda herself is a bit different, most likely because of her upbringing, and then one day she meets this family that have just moved across from her. This family is everything that Linda's family is not and Linda wants to be a part of it. She starts babysitting their youngest son and slowly but surely starts making her way into this family's life and this book just kind of becomes weird after that. That's all I'm going to tell you about the plot of this book because I don't want to spoil it but I was really confused especially towards the end of what was going on. I felt like at some points this book was really slow paced and at other points a lot of stuff was happening but it was still really confusing and I just kind of left this book confused and weirded out. I didn't really like the Main character. I just didn't really like anybody in this book to be honest. A lot of the times I was angry at this book, angry at where it was going, angry at the main character, angry at the ending of how it ended, and just angry in general. I don't know what I was expecting but I just don't think this book was for me. It might be a book that that is for you but it just wasn't a book for me so in the end I rated this one a 2 out of 5 stars. After that I have The Watcher by Ross Armstrong and I was sent this book in exchange for honest review by Harper Collins. so thank you then Harper Collins, for sending this my way. This book follows a main character named Lily and she is an adult. She's recently moved into this apartment complex and she is a bird watcher. But one day instead of starting to watch the birds, she watches the people in this apartment complex through like her little binoculars. And she discovers this really creepy thing and she thinks she sees someone get murdered the next day, somebody is dead and she's pretty sure the killer is now after her. That's really all I can tell you about this book without spoiling it. So this book is kind of a thriller book, you can kind of tell I guess by the little sentence here. It's Says, she's watching you but who's watching her and it's a very psychological thriller at times though I found it confusing again it made sense I just don't think that the way it went about the things that it did was very well done it wasn't creepy to me it was just kind of frustrating everyone was really frustrating this book the main character especially I mean her herself is like creepy she watches people 
Like, why are you doing that? And then these revelations would come out and I was just like, oh, was I meant to be shocked and surprised about that? Like, it's not like I necessarily saw them coming, it's just more like I didn't care. I just don't think this book was anything special and it didn't wow me like I thought it would, so in the end I rated this book a two and a half out of five stars. The next book I have to show you is The House of Lies by Renee McBride and this is Renee McBride's true story. On the blurb, it kind of mainly talks about how when she was six, she discovers that her father, who she always thought worked on a farm, actually is in jail because he murdered two people and how that kind of shocked her and how that affected her and her future and, and what happened basically after that. And whilst I would say the first half of the book definitely dealt with that a lot, I would say the second half of the book mainly dealt with I guess Renee's upbringing after that and not things that were related to that. I mean things that might have had a correlation but other things that happened to her. I'm gonna say this, Renee is a very strong person and I completely admire her. She has been through a lot from abusive relationships to sexual assault and I'm glad that she seems to be happier now and that she was able to write a book about her experience. I know that for some people it can be very therapeutic to write a book like this so I'm glad that she did it. For me though I just don't think that this book was for me. It feels weird I guess reviewing a book on someone's true story like how do you have a right to say whether you liked it or not? Though I was sent this book for review um, so I guess I have to talk about it. In times this book was just kind of slow for me. I felt like some stuff definitely could have been cut out. It just didn't really seem important or it was just kind of dragging the story down. Again this feels weird to be doing because this is I guess this is someone's history. This is someone's life. I liked it but it's not a book that I would reread and I gave it a three out of five stars. So so far all the books that I have reviewed are books that just haven't been for me. I haven't really enjoyed that much. They were okay but they weren't anything special. But the next book I have to show you is a book that I actually really enjoyed and it was We Were On A Break by Lindsay Kellick. Kellick, I'm not sure how to say her last name but I was sent this book in exchange for a review by Harper Collins. This book follows two characters who are in a relationship. They've just gotten back from this holiday where one of them was meant to propose to the other and then they suddenly just go on a break and it's both of these people trying to figure out what this break means and trying to figure out themselves again and figure out each other and deciding if they still want to be in this relationship. It's funny, it's romantic and I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed Lindsay's writing, I really liked the story of this, I liked how both characters really try and find themselves in this book and I enjoyed that, I especially enjoyed the ending. I found this book real and funny and romantic and, and sweet and sad at times and honestly I would really recommend it if it sounds interesting to you. I won't spoil anything but I will say that I was definitely rooting for this couple but at the same time I was also rooting for them separately to, to discover who they were and to discover if this relationship was right for them. The video just cut out which was very rude rude camera. So I'm not sure what I was saying before it did cut out, but basically I would really recommend this book. I really enjoyed the story, the message of finding yourself and how sometimes being in a relationship you can lose yourself and, and who you are. And sometimes it's important I guess to take a break and to rediscover yourself and to rediscover if this relationship is right for you. I would really recommend this book if it sounds interesting to you. I highly enjoyed it and I rated it 4 out of 5 stars. It was really just a lot of fun to read. So these are the books that I recommended today. Let me know in the comments below if you plan to pick any of these books up. Obviously I had very mixed feelings about all of these books. Like this video if you liked this style of reviewing and subscribe if you'd like to see more book related videos from me and I will see you next time. Okay, bye! At first I was afraid. I was petrified. I kept thinking how I'm on a burn, 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 a Can you tell I've had too much melted chocolate today? Yes, I'm gonna zoom out now. Oh my gosh, look at that. There's a line. I know there's a book shelf out there. Help me, God. I don't know what's going on. I had sugar and I am now on the wall. I am weird. There's a guy walking outside. Oh my gosh. It's too hot to walk. Don't walk. At this door. Don't even come in here. To walk out the door, I'm gonna sub now because I'm weird and my bum is properly thinking what the hell? What the hell is going on? <laughs> what cases hurt?